Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. And this time, as I continue my journey into the 1980s, starting with the year 1980, I get to Battle Creek Brawl, aka the Big Brawl, Jackie Chan film, which was his first American film that he starred in. He did this film, he had bit parts in the Cannibal Run films, but he starred in this, and then he starred in The Protector. He got fed up, went back, did, I believe he did Police Story, and then didn't come back until 1995, which he was Rumble in the Bronx, which that was the first time I knew about Jackie Chan was Rumble in the Bronx. I really enjoy that film. It's one of my favorite Jackie Chan flicks. I know Jackie Chan's not a fan of this film. He felt that he didn't get to, even though he's listed as the action choreographer, he felt like he didn't get the ability to direct the fight scenes the way he wanted to. But watching this film, I like it. I think it's a pretty decent flick. I definitely say it's better than the next film he would do, The Protector. Jetty Chan still has the comedy, still just the normal goofy guy. Plot is pretty straightforward. It's directed by Robert Klaus, who directed Enter the Dragon. And you also have music by Lalo Schifrin. Or Lalo Schifrin? I probably said that name wrong. And I know pieces of the score I've heard in quite a few other flicks. And pretty much, Jackie Chan is this guy. His father works at this restaurant. He has a girlfriend. Um, later on in the film, his brother's fiance is taken, and he's sort of pushed into doing this tournament called the Battle Creek Brawl in Texas. Uh, Mako, Mako, how did you say his name? Mako, who's no longer with us. He plays Jackie Chan's uncle, who also he's a chiropractor, but he also helps train Jackie Chan in the martial arts. I don't know if it's because I've seen many Jackie Chan films. I mean, I love Operation Condor. I love, which was technically a sequel to Armor of God. But then when in the U.S. they switched it, so Armor of God became Operation Condor 2. Love Police Story. I really enjoy Police Story 2. Police Story 3, which is Super Cop. Police Story 4, which is Jackie Chan's first strike. I enjoy the Rush Hour films, at least the first two. Not a fan of Rush Hour 3. Let's see. I enjoy Mr. Nice Guy. I enjoy... I'm trying to think. The Legend of Drunken Master. That's a fun one. I don't think I've seen the original Drunken Master. I don't think I have. Or Snake and Eagle's, Eagle's Shadow. I don't know those... I'm guessing those are on DVD. Those are the ones I have to pick up. Drunken Master and Snake and Eagle's Shadow. Let's see, I'm trying to think of other Jackie Chan films. The Medallion was pretty crappy. So was The Spy Next Door. That was pretty shitty. The Tuxedo, that was horrible. This is a hell lot better than any of those <laughs> Tuxedo, Medallion, Spy Next Door type of films. Uh, Around the World in 80 Days, I think this is a much better movie. I do feel this is better than The Protector, because The Protector, the director tried to make him be... A sort of Clint, well, Dirty Harry type of character in The Protector, and it didn't really work for him. Here, you could buy his character a lot more. Uh, you tell Jackie, I mean, this is done before The Protector, but you tell The Protector he seemed a bit uncomfortable playing that kind of role. This one, I think he's just a normal guy. It opens up with him doing moves. It kind of reminds me... The thing that popped in my head was when I saw, hey, that reminds me of Rapid Fire or Brandon Lee. With Brandon Lee doing moves in the opening credits. You have this big villain whose name is Kiss, because he gives the kiss of death, and he's sort of a big, almost looks like a wrestler, big guy, fighting this guy in a brawl style, gives him a bear hug. Does. The fact that he gives people kisses on the mouth, like, 
and it's like the kiss of death. Is it kind of strange? <laughs> it's kind of weird. I'm like, he's kissing people on the mouth. I mean, I understand there's the kiss of death and he's called kiss, but it's just still pretty strange. I'm like, I'm, I'm just saying, it's kind of strange for the main villain to do that. Like the big, tough, muscular bad guy, and then kiss right on the mouth of his uh, people he beat. Not that kind of beat. <laughs> Different beat. That's what I think of when it's like, that's kind of strange. But J.D. Chan, I think he does perfectly fine in his first American role. They let him use his voice so it's not dubbed or anything. I thought J.D. Chan did fine with the English language for his first starring role. Does a simple thing on top of a bridge where he sort of dangles his feet and does sit-ups. Has this girl... His father's being picked on by these gangsters and his father tells him, you must not fight. So Jackie Chan's like trying not to fight but he's throwing tomatoes and he's trying to dodge him. And maybe Jackie Chan wasn't a big fan of not be able to let loose. Because you tell that the fighting is a little bit slower than future Jackie Chan films. A little bit slower. But I'm like, is it because of that? Or is it because he's dealing with folks that are not trained in martial arts like him? And a lot of them are much bigger and slower guys. But still, you can tell Jackie Chan is very acrobatic. He has a nice charm to him. You still have that comedy within, which you didn't have the comedy in The Protector. Here you still have the comedy, the, the goof fun. Hits his head and does this. And he, again, he can't punch because his dad will get mad. But he's just sort of avoiding and making them hit themselves. And one leads to another. They go away and Jai Chan goes to meet his uncle. Uh, Mako, who's a chiropractor, but he, he helps train Jackie. Like he's, Mako's throwing baseballs, and Jackie Chan's avoiding all of them, showing his little bit of acrobatic skills. He takes a baseball and accidentally kicks it at Mako and almost hits him, and Jackie has a you know, sort of goofball fun face. And it's gave me some you know, smirks and small chuckles. Because Jackie Chan nowadays is interesting because he wants to do different stuff. I mean, you see some of the later police story films are much more different than his older stuff. And he's trying to do flits a la the film he did with John Cusack and Adrian Brody. I forget what it was. It's like a period piece. And there was a, one called The Shinjuku Incident which is much more of a dramatic role for Jackie Chan. So he's trying to do different things because he's up there in age and he can't do all the stuff he used to be able to do. But it's seeing all the Jackie Chan films like Rumble in the Bronze, it's kind of nice to go back and see a flick where he's much more straightforward, just punch and kick in. You really see him get mad and angry, which is pretty rare for a Jackie Chan film. I mean, that's the part that I like in Police Story, where he's just throwing people through glass. And Yeah, I mean, this doesn't hold a candle to those classes, like Rumble in the Bronx, or Police Story, or Super Cop, and so forth. But for his early film, I still don't think this is that bad. It's a fast-paced flick. It's 90-some minutes long. Again, it's the fight is more straightforward. Kicking, punching... But again, you still have that sort of goof, fun, comedy charm of Jackie Chan, and um, I've seen much, much worse in dozens of other films. And the film's not complicated, it's pretty simple. Again, he's training with Mako, and the Mako's using the cane, and he's, Jackie Chan's avoiding the cane. He gets in a little uh, race, a roller race derby. It's three-man team, three people, and he's person have three of them. Some gangsters want them to stop Jackie because he fucked with them before the gangsters in that alleyway when Jackie was helping his dad out. So the gangsters tells the other two teams, hey, you know, 
let him get hurt or make him get hurt or make him lose the race, lose his money, however you want to put it. And you did a decent roller race derby where one team goes and then the next person goes and Jackie's the last of the three. And they're trying to knock him down, beat him up, and he's jumping over a car and people have the hose and there's sort of this little maze. I don't know if you want to call it maze, but this sort of little thing that these roller skaters have to do to win the race. So there's a hose of blasting all the all of them back and Jackie gets like a trash can lid and you know blocking it. Actually you see Durant himself, Larry Drake in a bit role as a guy who sort of hosts the event that says stuff like, We haven't breaking bones here. So as I see Larry Drake there, oh it's Durant, it's Dr. Diggles in a small part. That was fun to see. Jackie Chan wins the race. Him and his girl leave, and then the third guy, his buddy, gets beat up and fucked up, put in the hospital. Jackie finds out later, but before he finds out, he's trying to put some booze on his girlfriend, and Mako stops him, saying, you must be pure mind and, and body. But then, on the other hand, Mako's having fun with this really big bodied lady. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mako liked them big. Big and big. Nothing wrong with that. And pretty much these bad guys realize that Jackie can fight and they're going to try to get him into this tournament in Texas. So they give him another test in this outdoor stage, outside stage. And these two guys are fighting Jackie and he's using this kind of a stool. It's lawn. It's about this wide and about this lawn. And he's flipping him back and forth. And again, probably not as fast. Not even probably. It's not as fast paced as you would see in Rumble in the Bronx or Super Cop. And I think that's why Jackie had a little bit of problem because also Robert Klaus didn't want to do a lot of tapes. And Jackie Chan is a type of, no, we don't do as many tapes as until we get it right and perfect. And Robert Klaus didn't believe in that. And Jackie was just like, what the fuck? What's going on here? What's this? So you can tell it's, some, it's a little bit, I don't want to say sluggish, but a little bit slower paced. And this is Jackie Chan in his prime, so it's not Jackie's fault, it's just he had to slow things a bit down. So maybe that's why some of the criticism comes into play. And even the roller derby, like, and I say roller derby, but it's, for people who don't know, it's a race on roller skates. And even then, it's not like fantastic stunts of going through windows and this and that. It's, if it wasn't Jackie Chan, if it was someone else who started in it, I don't think it would get... I think people are like, oh, that's cool. But now that you know what Jackie Chan can do, and they're like, ah, oh, it's just an okay... You know, I think it's a decent race, and it, the fights are pretty decent. But maybe that's why, because I've seen so much of Jackie Chan doing that kind of fighting. Now, it's kind of interesting to see him just do a more straightforward type of fighting. It's not too much of using items and using this and using this and using this and using this and using, this and using, this and using that. A lot of times it's, you know, sort of almost doing the Bruce Lee thing. Which, again... I can see if there was no more Jai Chan films made after this. It's like, oh, that's a shame, but nice to see what he can really bring to the table. Which, again, is why Rumble in the Bronx was a much more successful film for Jackie as an American entry. But it's nice to look back and see him do a little bit of a different stuff. So it's nice now that we have the big filmography of Jackie Chan films. And... Yeah, I don't think it's that bad of a movie at all, really. Uh, but he beats these two guys' ass, and he goes to pick up his brother's fiance. She's been taken. Uh, they say, well, you have to f fight for us. And in the meantime, 
your brother's never met this girl. They've only written via letter, so here's one of our girls, and you take her home to your brother so that he won't call the cops and pretend to be her. And then when if you win, and if you fight, then we'll give you the, the real fiancé back. So he doesn't want to do it, but he has to do it. As one of those, if you call the cops, we'll kill her and all that stuff. Talks with Mako, talks with his girlfriend, takes the fake fiance, gives it to his brother. Which I'll, I'll get to that when I get to the end. Actually, let me jump ahead. That's one of the problems I do have with the film. That, yeah, it's you can tell that the fight's a little bit slower paced than the Jackie Champions we would see later. But that fiance subplot doesn't really wrap up. Because Jackie wins the tournament, and then you just see the guy, the bad, I call him a bad guy, pretty much go, oh, every, yeah, in Chicago, everything's been taken care of. That's all he says. And there's Jackie smiling with his girl in the end credits, and you're like, we never see the real fiancé again. <laughs> and we never see the reaction that the brother has of, wait a minute, this isn't my real fiancé? This is a fake fiancé? We never see any of that. There's no wrap-up of that. Uh, to be honest, you didn't even... If that was going to be the case, you didn't need that subplot. You could easily have it. It's a $15,000. If you get it, you win. You have $15,000 for you and your woman. And... If you win... We will leave your father and his restaurant alone. That's all it had to be. And that's part of the deal. But then they had this fiancé of his brother that's taken, and then it's not even really much of a wrap-up at the end. It's, it's almost as if someone, oh, shit, we forgot this. Okay, you uh, say that one-line dialogue, and Jackie, you smile, and... Which, why the fuck would Jackie Chan be smiling at the guy? They took his brother's fiance. He should be going up and punch him in the face or something. Or kicking their ass and getting the, his brother's fiance. But, so that's one problem I have with the film. That's kind of stupid, to say the least. And Robert Klaus wrote the film, so yeah, I blame the director because he's also the writer. Again, just have it be, okay, here's a shitload of money and you leave my father's restaurant alone. That's all you needed. Just saying. So you didn't need this whole fiancé subplot. But before we get to that... Jackie Chan and Mako sneak in. They fight some thugs. Jackie Chan has uh, some nice moments. Like he throws a hat, the guy looks at and Jackie kicks the gun out of the guy's hand and hits the guy and catches his hat. Again... Kind of nice to go back and see more of just the straightforward Jackie Chan fighting. I mean, usually it'd be 20 flips, flips here, flips here, here's this thing, da 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 da, here's this thing, da 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 da. So, again, it's kind of a nice change of pace to see just a more straightforward Jackie Chan pissed off, I don't beat the fuck out of you and knock you out type of thing. It's just, yeah, it's nice to see. I mean, I know, I can understand people saying, well, that's not Jackie Chan, but again, just. With all the movies that have come out since, it's nice to go back and see something a little bit different, which makes it a little bit refreshing. And I didn't grow up with this film. I saw this only a couple years ago for the first time, and then recently I just picked up this DVD. No features, of course. But yeah, they sneak in, and they get caught, and they say, hey, you don't fight in this tournament, and they're like, okay, fine, we'll fight in your brawl. And so Mako's training Jackie Chan, and the, these, there's training dummy, or Jackie Chan's on this treadmill, and there's these little spice tacks that if Jackie Chan falls behind, he gets stuck, and he has to keep running. Some nice bits of comedy in there. And then the, the brawl, the, pretty much it's, the Bowtree brawl happens. It's this fairground where a lot of people, and kids, and everyone's cheering and yelling and watching and first it starts off as an all-out brawl and then it goes into A versus B, C versus D Jackie fights this beard guy 
They get some nice bits of business in there, like Jagged Flips and drinks a guy's soda. The guy with the beers lift up the table, and Jackie's running on it like a treadmill. The guy gets pissed driving the car, and Jackie's avoiding the car a couple times, including one where it drives, and Jackie grabs on top and flips up, so narrowly misses the car. Uh, the next fight, Jackie Jane fights... I don't know the guy's name, but he looks like John Henry. And people are like, who the fuck is John Henry? If you know your myths, your tall tales, John Henry's the big guy who the railroad spike and he slams it down. That's who he looks like. I mean, or hell, you look at uh, the comic book John Henry that they based that movie Steel on with Shaquille O'Neal. That's who he looks like. I think his name was John Henry. And that's what he reminds me of. I don't know the actor's name. But Jackie's able to fight that guy. He gets beaten up quite a bit, but able to fight him. Then the next day, he gets a no saying they've taken Mako and you gotta lose the fight. So Jackie Chan sort of. He can't lose. And maybe that's the case. Maybe they're like, well, in this third act, we gotta have him. This note saying that he's gonna lose. Or that. He, if you win, we'll kill Mako, and then it's like, well, why does he just lose? Oh, he can't lose because the brother's fiance's taken him. I'm like, you could have... If that's the case, have a better wrap-up of that story, Robert Klaus. I know he's no longer with us, but still. And then even then, Mako, like, a minute or two later, is able to break out and escape on his own and get to the top of this tower and ring the bell and say, hey, I'm okay. And in the meantime, Jackie Chan's doing a little bit of comedic business. For example, takes a guy's cowboy hat, pretends he's part of the crowd, and the guy finally notices him. Notices him, tries to beat him up. And then Jackie Chan realizes his uncle's okay. He's beating the shit out of this big guy. Follows him to this movie theater, beats the shit out of thugs. And again, that's where you get like a pissed off Jackie Chan. I'm like, wow, this is nice to see a change of pace. It's nice to see a pissed off Jackie Chan. Because that's how many movies can you name that you see a pissed off Jackie Chan? Just that old school sort of kick ass kung fu. Jackie Chan didn't get to do that too much. So again, that makes it a little bit refreshing. And now that I think about it, I don't think I think this is the only tournament movie he ever did as well. I mean. It's not a, calling it a tournament movie isn't really fair because it's only the finale, but still, it's, I don't know if he's ever done that before or since. If he did, someone can let me know, but so it's interesting to see him do that a little bit. Again, was able to do top-notch Jackie Chan stuff, so again, maybe that's why Jackie's not a big fan of it, but Considering the stuff he's done in the past 10 years, this easily beats the stuff he's done in the past 10 years. It beats the last couple of police stories, like New Police Story and Police Story Lockdown. I hated those movies. I think this, I like this much more. The Medallion, Around the World in 80 Days, Rush Hour 3, The Spy Next Door. I know there's a new one that's supposed to be coming out called Skip Trace. With him and Johnny Knoxville, directed by Rennie Harlan. I don't know what happened to that movie. That movie, like, disappeared in the thin air. I'm like, it's that bad? <laughs> it just disappeared? That movie, that f period piece. There's another one he did. It was, like, him and some other guys called Two Brothers. No, not Two Brothers. I can't remember what that was called. I actually looked it up, but fuck it. But yeah, I mean, he kissed the thug's ass, comes out, fights some, the bad guy, the big guy, who likes to kiss people, kisses his ass, and gets some nice moves, has a little hopscotch maneuver where he, he's on the ground and thrusts his feet up and hits the guy in the face, or a nice backflip where he does a backflip, and as he does the backflip, the, his feet hit the back of the guy's head, so he flips, and then his feet hit the guy. It's all done in one shot. I can't really describe it, but it's, oh, that's a really cool move. Or jumps and does, da, 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 and then comes back down. So you do some really good moves from Jackie Chan. Beats the guy's ass. 
He's with his girl. I guess the fiance's going to be okay. The brother's his brother's fiance because again, all the guy does is everything's been taken care of in Chicago. I think Jackie Chance character's name is Jerry. Hey Jerry, it's okay. Everything's been taken care of in Chicago. I'm like, you fucking stole his woman. I mean, his brother's woman. I mean, Jackie should be pissed at him and or make sure let us see the fia the brother fia. Brother's fiance would never see her again. Just that one moment where she's taken. That's the last time you see her in the movie. So, that and some of the you know, slower paced fighting, which again, a lot, pretty much all the guys Jackie faces at the end. I mean, not the thuds, but like in the brawl, are all bigger guys, so they're slower. So, Jackie Chan can only do what he, he's able to. At the same time, I'd rather watch this than The Quest with John Claude Van Damme, which I reviewed all Van Damme's films. I mean, I love Bloodsport and Kipbox and all of them, but The Quest, not a favorite of mine. I think this is much better than The Quest, much better than Jackie Chan's films for the past 10 years. I don't think this film is that bad of a movie. Pretty decent score, fast paced, 90 some minutes. Nice to see Mako in there from Conan the Barbarian. And. Yeah, he did voice Splinter in the CGI TMNT movie. I think that was the last thing he did before he passed away. But, let's see Larry Drake in a teeny tiny part. Overall, I had fun with the movie. Because some of the movies I've seen lately, yeah, I had fun with this film. I like Battle Creek Brawl. So, that's just my thoughts on that. If you're wondering, let's see, you got a little thing there. And the disc, just picture of Jackie. Again, no features. I guess Fox owns this, or the DVD, or whatever. Anyway, it's Battle Creek Brawl. Thanks for watching. Take care, and stay tuned for more videos down the road. Later.